Okay. Yeah. Are we good? Yes. All right. So, Herschel, if you let me sure. take the screen share. Um, all right. Okay. So let's move forward to start getting the second building block of your requirements analysis aspect. So I know I've kind of like it's a few slides that we have skipped it. Don't worry about it, we'll cover those things later. But I think it's this is the right point to get the business process modeling talked about. So think of business process modeling, right? Um, what we're gonna talk about it is how the business processing are used it and where the system comes in play. We identify the various users and stakeholders, how those stakeholders come into play in order to perform a task, okay? Uh, so we'll talk through it or the business process modeling and what you need to do it. So whenever you are trying to build a system, there is going to be a capabilities of the system, right? That you're going to define through functional requirements and non-functional requirements will identify the operational characteristics of the system. But then each of the capability is going to be used in some sense, right? So business processes are identify how those capabilities are going to be utilized. And it also helps you to identify what business rules that you need to implement it in order to utilize those capabilities, okay? So for example, right, um, in the PHN nursing system, we talked about, hey, uh, nurses go and visit as part of the daily activities to the patients. It's great, but how does nurses get the patient information, right? So what is the process used it for nurse to identify which patients I need to visit today, right? And that means there is gonna be certain business rules that's gonna identify how and what patients each of the nurses visit. And those are typically defined through the business processes, okay? The other aspects you have to do it is that you may have certain capabilities like reporting that doesn't change any data in the systems but you will never have a process that don't manipulate any data because then it's a passive data full of information. It's not the process activity, okay? So let's talk quickly about it, why it's an important to understand the processes. So if you think about any business, right? Whether there are systems or non-systems, they always have a business processes through which they serve the customers, build the customers and help the customers. Or even to some extent, they manage their businesses through their own processes. Okay. So business processes are always at the center of everything that the business wants to do it. And some may relate to the systems that you're building it to support that. So it's always business processes comes first and then you build a system to support those business processes. But so when you look at it from a business point of view, processes are at the center of everything, okay? The processes like it's are used by your organization structures, right? So you're gonna have different people using different parts of processes. So if I have to look at the custom creation, right? Within that, the organization is identified as, if you look at the broadly, the employees who will be supporting the help desk, the employees who are at the leadership or management employee who will get the reports out of the custom creations. Then you have a pricing department, which is interacting with the system. And then you have the product department, which interacts with the system. So there's multiple people within an organization is gonna interact with the system, but they're gonna interact through a specific business process, okay? Um, again, business processes manipulate the data. 
So for example, one of the simple data manipulation is, hey, I'm ordering a product. Well, there is a data created, right? And it manipulated the data. Where I'm trying to set up the prices, that's the pricing process is the data. The business processes always execute the business rules. So they enforce it, okay? So in other words, we can have a business rule that, hey, pricing department will set up prices, pricing based on this rules, right? Whether they utilize the system or not, even manually, if they're quoting the prices, they will utilize this business rules. So those processes execute the business rules. Obviously, uh, if you are building a system that support the processes, your process is gonna be implemented through the functional requirements and they're gonna use certain technologies, right? Be it <coughs> a ordering, be it a billing, be it a payment, those all are different technologies, okay? And a lot of times you may have a location specific business processes. So uh, earlier I gave you an example of online banking, right? Um, so the way you do it, the banking is, if you're doing it from home, it's gonna be a little bit different experience. So your business process is gonna be a little bit different because you as a user are accessing Versus if I walk into a branch and do a banking, then I'm gonna get involved with Taylor. So that's gonna be a different process. So a lot of times your processes may also be identified based on the location from which it's executed, right? So, but they will always have a location through which it executes. It. So if you look at this diagram, right? There are various aspects of the business that all depend on the business processes. So why even do business process modeling in the first place, right? Because it essentially brings it all of the aspects of the business together. Like it's whether it is who are the participants, what are the rules, and what are the steps that needs to be performed in order to accomplish a goal, okay? Uh, and their whole purpose is to have a, you try the business processes to get a good understanding of how things is, works in the business and what kind of things you need to do it in order to improve your business, whether it's re-engineering or automating. And the automating is the key aspects of building systems, right? Whenever you're building a software, all you're doing it is able to automate some of the functions, whether it's tracking the data, capturing the data, <coughs> or performing certain tasks. So as a quality assurance person, you have to use business processing tool, modeling as a tool and a technique to capture the understanding of what is happening in the business and how the system is gonna interact with the business. Okay, so it's a process which is allows you to create a visual model of how things work. Okay, it's typically a step of processes, a series of things and order in which they are identified and related, right? So essentially who does what and in what order is the key thing for building a business process. Now, as you go through it, there are certain process modeling notations that people use it. So business processes are fairly common in any businesses. Right, And then there is a standard way, there is a body which talks about how to capture the business processes, right? So they have come up with the standard tools <clears throat> and notations for which you utilize it to capture the, tool, uh, the business processes, right? So you may have a start and a stop, right? Which is your terminator and initiators. Then you're gonna have a specific steps or a process or a sub process. In, in a lot of processes, you're gonna make a decisions. So based on those decisions, you have a ability to capture those decision in a diamond shape. And then uh, essentially you may have a call out to other processes. That's what it circles represent. Okay, and we'll draw one here quickly. The other aspects of business processes swim length. 
right? So swim lanes is essentially typically used to represent a specific user or user segment or a specific area of involvement within the process. And we'll utilize that also as we go through it, okay? The swim lane diagrams, right? It talks about how the different participants influence the process or perform the task needed into the uh, process, okay? So he, here is a simple business process, okay? So we all work in some extent in some corporation or corporate world, right? And occasionally we incur the expenses <clears throat> that we do it for the company or a business on behalf of the company. And there is always a aspect that the business says that, hey, we'll reimburse employee for certain things, but in order to reimbursement, we need to follow certain process. So let's say, for example, uh, I work in a company which essentially uh, requires me to like it's carry a cell phone for the support of the processes and um, attend the calls on behalf of company. And, and in order to do that, they've said, okay, we will reimburse your cell phone bills in order to support the activities that you do through it, your cell phone to, uh, in support of our business, right? And so typically you have a employee who goes through like it's kind of submitting the bills, but then you also have the manager has to approve it, right? Because you want to make sure there are checks and balances that the people are submitting only their cell phone bills, right? Not the whole family cell phone bill or somebody else's cell phone bill. So there is always um, checks and balances. And then you will have your payroll department, which essentially like it's a final uh, entity which reimburses or disimburses that payment, okay? So that's the context of what the business is doing. So if you have to capture that as a business process, you will do something like what is seen on the screen, right? So uh, first step typically happens in that entire process is it says, hey, as an employee, I'm gonna fill out an expense reimbursement form, which is gonna capture what expense I'm requesting it to reimburse. Okay, so if you look into the step 1.1, which talks about, hey, as an employee, the first thing I'm gonna do is fill out my expense report. Then I'm gonna go ahead and submit that expense report, right? So that expense report, they, if they have a system, they will do it through the systems. If not, they will fill out the form and then hand over to their supervisor, right? So that's where from 1.2 to 1.3 flows it. And if you notice it, right? So. The first two steps, what in the employee swim lane? That means it is performed by employee. Then there is a supervisor swim lane, which talks about what task supervisor will perform in this process, right? So the first thing that get it is they get a expense form, a completed expense form from supervisor, okay? Then they review it, right? And they say, is the expense that they are requesting it is in compliance with the company policies? And did we have agreed that we will pay this expenses, right? So they do that check, right? And based on that check, they can follow one of the two paths. One is if the expense report was incomplete or it was not valid expenses, they're gonna reject it and send it back to employee and say, hey, you know what? It's good, but we're not gonna pay for this expenses, right? So you look at it, there is a diamond, which talks about, hey, I'm gonna make this decision. And one of the decision is no. And in that case, I'm gonna send that back to employees. So it comes back to employees that, hey, I'm gonna receive notification that my expense report is rejected. Okay. The other path could happen as part of the expense report validation by manager is they do re recognize, hey, it is a valid expense and it is the right amount 
and it has all the necessary detail that we require to fill up. So at that point, they will go ahead and they will approve it or submit that expense to the payroll department or in some companies, they may have an administration department which encompasses the auditors and the payroll, right? So they will submit that. So 1.5 is essentially an activity where supervisor says, yes, it's approved and let me submit it for further processing. So at that point, that particular request flows into the third streamline, which is goes to the third group for the consideration, right? So they receive the expense form, they capture that into whatever the corporate system they have it is, how we are paying it and what we are paying it to employ as an expense. And then they trigger the payment through your payroll systems or whatever the expense reimbursement system they may have. And once the payment is done or triggered, it will send notification back to employees so that employees now aware that, hey, that expense report that I had submitted is approved and it's paid so that they can go look into their bank account to see it's whether they received the money or not. So this is the simplest business process. Any question? No. Okay. Do you see it how the different parts of information gets captured that then you can utilize it for automation, right? So in here, you can create a complete expense reimbursement system, right? Which allows three different users, employee, supervisor, and administrator to interact with it and they each will have a different features or capabilities within the system to do the task, okay? So let's quickly look at what exactly we did, right? So if I have to build that process, right? Uh, there are a few things that I need to do. It. One is first I need to figure it out. What are my starting events? Essentially, what is gonna trigger my process? In the previous example, an employee who is filling out that expense reimbursement form triggers that event, okay? Then there is a reference data, right? So you may have a um, something within the event that may happen that may trigger it, okay? You have to make sure that is it in the scope of this process or are they relevant or not, okay? And then you may have a reporting event that allows you to monitor the business performance. So for example, right, one of the reporting event is logging that expense form, right? So that now you can track it, what all expenses have been submitted by given employee or what all, how many employees are submitting the expenses for this particular type of activities, right? So it allows you to monitor the business performance. The other aspects you need to think about it is every event which kicks it, right? You have to identify who starts that event. So in which swim lane it belongs to it. Then you first look into what is the normal happy path, right? So in this case, the happy path is when expense report is a valid, that becomes my happy path. And then you have to then lay it out. What are unhappy path for that? That means, when there are certain exception happens, how do you handle that? So essentially the no branch from the expense valid becomes an unhappy path. Okay. And then for each process, as we talked about, you need to identify what is the lane, what is the normal path and what are the exception path going in and out of those lanes. Okay. And then as we get into it, sometimes we may have to do it a whole bunch of uh, process, right? So for example, here, you may have a make a payment, maybe entire process in itself, right? You may just say, hey, when you're trying to make a payment, you need to identify as essentially whether there needs to be taxes withheld for this expense, whether there is no taxes. The other aspects you may have to do it is, what is the method for the payment that we're going to use it? Is it gonna be electronic or do I have to do a paper check? And then if it's an electronic, make sure that the employee's bank account where they should receive this payment is set it up. What happens if it's not set up with those exceptions and so on? Okay. 
any question in terms of things that we need to do it in order to model a process. All right, so let's do one, right? So a couple of things, right? So we'll use our custom creator or custom creations, right? We created the stakeholder map, right? Uh, so let's define the business process, right? One of the things that we talked about is ordering an item, right? So when we were working on this, uh, context diagram, right? We try to pull the thread based on a, I'm a corporate customer and I want to place an order, right? So that's the context that we have it for an order, okay? So let's use that to model our business processes, right? So the way we're going to do it is um, there are some freeware tools, right? One of the tool is Smart Draw, right? So if you go to just search on a Google a Smart Draw and they say, hey, I want to try it now. They have a cloud version that all it requires you is to set up your user ID and a password. And then it'll allow you to do that. Once you do that, they have a whole bunch of uh, templates and one of the templates is flowchart, right? So you can pick a flowchart with a swim lane and that'll allow you to capture it. And I usually like a landscape because it allows me to do a lot more um, extension of the processes. You can do it either landscape mode or portrait mode. And then they have a whole bunch of example for the different processes that you can use it to essentially start as a starting point. What I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna use it just a simple template and gonna start, start from a scratch. Okay, so when I click on a landscape, this is what I will get, it. okay? So it allows me to essentially create an information about all the uh, persons. So it automatically created four swim lanes for me it, that I can go ahead and change it to do, put a whole bunch of things in it. And it put the start tag into one of the topmost swim lanes. So it allows me to, hey, this individual or this particular group or this event is gonna kick off my process. Okay. So I, I'm gonna try to essentially, let's say I wanna capture the information about ordering an item. How does it happen, right? For corporate customers. So this is another place where you're gonna start utilizing your interview techniques to talk with your business user or key stakeholders to map it out a business process, okay? So we'll go back to Herschel as our user, right? And I will ask him the questions. And as we progress it, I will go ahead and create a process diagram. And the process diagram is gonna be about ordering an item, right? So, Let's start a conversation, okay? So, Herschel, you there? Yes, I am here, Dilip. All right, thank you. So, Herschel, what we wanted your help is, is to capture the overall business process that happens around when you're, you're envisioning your corporate customers to place an order and get them, okay? So, um, what we would like to do it is have some conversation with you. And as we are doing conversation, I will try to capture it. So hopefully um, uh, you will see it that as I captured the note, and if it's something that I'm capturing it, it's kind of not in agreement with what you feel the process is, let us know so we can talk through it and fix it as we go through it. Okay. So is this going to be the as is process or that's a to be process delivery? Well, uh, did, did we talk it, about as is? Uh... So remember, like it's one of the things you mentioned it is today, most of the processes are manual, right? And it's focused right, right. only on individual customers. Right. So okay. the, the way I want to do it is, unless you are feeling that we need to utilize as is process and then modify, 
to me, it's going to be a brand new process because you are going to now start utilizing the corporate customers for the first time. And it is going to be a little bit different. As you said, for most part, they will do the same functions, right. but they will be doing a little bit different. Uh, okay. So I wanted to capture it from where you envision it's going to happen. And then we'll come back and then identify what of those things are already existent today. Right. Uh, what what are things that you add would require as a system capabilities to be built into the new systems that you would like it to develop? Okay. So so, so we'll work through the uh, to be process. ideal process to be process yeah. right. Okay. And we'll work through those to be process, and, and then we'll come back to map into it is what is the current state after that. Right. right. So. Um, so let's start with it, right? So uh, as we talked about, right? So the first person who will get involved in ordering an item is obviously your corporate customers, right? Right. So they're gonna go ahead and let's say they come to your site and then they wanna place an order or they wanna like it's do an order. So the first thing they can do it, like it's, and I'm trying to like it's comp compare some of the capabilities that your corporation does it with some well-known competitors, right? Like Amazon. So sometimes you may require your customer to log in. Sometimes they may browse the things. So what is your vision? Like it's when a customer comes in, do they have to log in first into the system? or they can browse it. So what? what is, so help me understand what is the first thing they do it whenever the customer wants to order an item? Certainly, so the, so the product catalog uh, that we published for online ordering is available for anybody or, um, who comes to our site. So they, they don't, do not have to log in in order to view the products or what products uh, are available for catalog. Okay. So, so one so thing I want to like can, it's kind can, of so that they can one. browse for the product, um, and uh, they can they can select the product. Um, okay. But but when it comes to the customization of the product, that that's where we'll ask them to log in at that point and okay. uh, work through the process. <clears throat> okay. So. Just for the class, right? I'm gonna step away from questioning. If you look at it right, within the tool, you have a whole bunch of symbols that you can utilize it, right? And each one is kind of talked about, hey, this is part of the process. This is start and end activity. Here is the alternate process, right? So sometimes if you wanna do it, uh, it will essentially allows you to identify instead of this, do that process type of thing. Then you have a decision, uh, which was the diamond that I showed you earlier. Then they have a data input steps, right? So there are multiple things that they can do it, right? So now coming back to what Herschel said, right? The first thing he said that like somebody can do is browse catalog, right? So that's the activity they will do it. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, select a line, and then I'm gonna go ahead and give me a moment as I go through it. Um, I think you should be able to connect those two dots. Yeah. Yep, there you go. Okay, so if you look at it, I selected a line and then added that to this one, right? Now, one thing that Herschel said is that you're gonna have your pricing department and a product department involved in this one, right? So what he said that, hey, I'm gonna create a catalog, right? So this particular group, which is your product, what did we call? I'm gonna go back to our context diagram and we call this product department employee, right? So I'm just gonna call it product department lane, right? And all they're doing it is they're inputting the data Right. And then it just says create item catalog. 
actually be done, right? So the since it's going to be a data input, it just says, hey, product department has an item catalog. And then they go ahead and they it becomes an input that the people use it to browse the catalog, right? So once they browse the catalog, one of the things that the Herschel mentioned as a user is they're gonna do a select the item, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and put it as select item. Okay. I'm gonna do it select item for customization. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, now let's talk through it. So Herschel, what happens once they select the item for customization? You indicated that at that point, they must log in, right? So actually it, now I'm uh, thinking on it, right? Uh, uh -huh. So they can uh, select the item for customization. They can select more than one item for customization as well. Uh, but until they are ready to order, um, it, it it will not, they will not have to. We do not force them to log in. Okay. Um, so, so so they they can select one or more item for customization. Uh, that is the first thing, and they they, they can finally say uh, like uh, do the checkout, and that's where we will ask them to uh, log in. Oh, okay. So that means they will as they select it, an item. Right. They're going to essentially go ahead and add to a notion. Are you indicating some sort of a shopping cart type of notion? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So well, if you're okay, because um, they can select an item and then they're going to continue to browse for more, right? So, right, right. That's uh, let me go ahead and reflect that into our process then. Uh, Uh, and do you see it like it's, they may select it, go back and forth, but they had to explicitly add to the card in order for that to go into the order, right? That's correct. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. And then one of the things that they can do it, as you indicated, and if I'm gonna do that is gonna move this thing down. Connected. And then you say that after adding an item to the cart, they can go back. Hang on, I need to select. A ship connector. So from here, they will go back to browsing, right? Right. <sighs> Sorry, I'm trying to like, it's still figured it out. This new tool, they had changed the version from what they had it before. <sighs> okay, but you get the idea, right? So it's getting up in there, going back. Uh, so Herschel, let's say they keep um, adding the item to the cart. Now right. they are ready to order. What happens next? Um, th this is where uh, they will do the checkout and uh, <clears throat> 
basically uh, they, they will they, they will we will we'll ask them to log in uh, afterwards okay so when they are trying to do a checkout right right so we could just say ready for checkout oh actually that needs to be a decision right because you're going to have them <clears throat> So now that I'm kind of thinking through it, um, I'm going to make a change to this process based on what you recommend. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to have this decision to continue the shopping goes more here. And then I'm gonna see this one is, as long as they're not ready to check out, they will keep continuing it. And when they are ready to check out, you're gonna essentially ask them to log in. So let's, And this is when they are ready to check out. It's, you're able to see it clearly. Okay, what happens once they log in? Uh, so log in, uh, so obviously, or as part of the order placement, right? We'll ask them, do they want to customize any of their products? And that's where uh, they will upload the images uh, related to the products or they, they can do the customization at that point. Okay. So it, it, uh, it's a decision point, customize, customize uh, okay, so it, any product, yeah. Okay, so it's a decision point, okay. Right. Uh, right, in the ends. So this thing is gonna do and then it's gonna have two branches, right? We'll say one is yes and one is no. So what happens if they say no? Uh, then they will just uh, go and make the payment. Okay, so, but what about the pricing, right? So one of the things that you had mentioned it while we were building the stakeholder uh, in a context diagram is that all the item based on their loyalty will be priced differently and they may have a discount. So if they right. don't do any customization, then it becomes yep. a standard price, no discount. Yep, yep, that is correct. Okay, so, so at that point, right? So when they perform, Will they go to the payment system to make uh, the payment? Yes, that, that is correct. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and change that to payment. Uh, okay, so if it's no, uh, then going to do is make a payment. Which could still be an additional process, right? So we can talk right, about right. the making a payment yep. portion later because we still That's want right. to focus on that. So this one is customizing. It's not there. Okay. What happens if they do want to customize? So they can basically customize the product information, what does it based on the product, depending on the type of the product. So it could be a whole nother process as well, depending on the product selection, they have it. Okay. Product so, categories, yeah. 
So they will go execute it. Yeah. Product uh, customization. Yep. All right. So they can have a potentially customized product. Right. Okay. Now, can they do a scenario where, let's say I added five items into my cart. Mm -hmm. I want to customize two of them and don't want to customize three of them. Then what happens? Um, again, that would be part of the customized product process, um, mm -hmm. but but they, they can do that technically. Uh, they can customize one of them and uh, not customize all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in those cases, let's say if I want to customize two items and customize and not customize three. So does that point the order get split into two orders and they make a payment for one? No, it will be a combined order. Say, same order. Combined. Yeah, combined. So we'll give them the pricing right there um, as part of the okay. uh, customizing product process. Yep. So they will re see the updated pricing. Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and then just say is that as long as there is a one item that you wanna customize, you don't right. proceed to the payment. You, you proceed to the payment only if none of the item is customized. Otherwise That's you correct. go to customize product. Right, okay, right. Yeah. Um, what happens once they customize it? Let's say they customize it and uh, do they update the card? I'm assuming it's right. The car items is updated in the cart. Right. With that customization. Yep. Right. So. So update pricing, right? After the customization. <clears throat> Reflect uh, updated pricing. Okay. But then pricing, right? You say that it's going to be determined. So is it a a request price, or is it that based on customization, there will already be a rules engine defined that is going to give them updated price? Yeah, so I would think it up as a separate process because it could be get really complicated based on the rules for for the pricing. So okay. that that would uh, needs to be its own process for the okay. pricing determination. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and call a pricing department because I'm assuming they're gonna get involved in right. whatever the process. Yep. So they have a process um, that as you pointed out, they will have. Okay, so they will just have price and order. Right. Right. So based on the items, you're gonna go ahead and place the order, right? Price an order. Now what happens once they price it? Um, the, they have to make the payment regardless. So do, do the customer review at that point and decide, hey, it's expensive. I don't wanna move forward with this customization. Um, yeah, that, that's a good point. So that, that uh, needs to happen. That we need to provide them flexibility to add or remove the products um, if they don't want the customization. Okay. Yeah. So finalize the product um, selection. Review and, uh, price. Pricing. Yeah. All right. So. It goes back to the customers. Then, now again, these are automated steps. So the pricing department, I mean, uh, they already set up all the pricing um, and the rules. Right, but they, as a customer, right, they will still review price. So, like it's, you say that that the pricing department will price an order, and that could be automated or it could be manual intervention, right? You said that's a dedicated process. Yeah, but yeah. the output of that process is going to be some sort of update to the price that goes into the card, right? That now customer is going to be able to see it, right? Right. So once they review the price, as you said, they can make a determination, ready to finalize, right? And then if the answer is no, 
right? They can go back and edit the card, right? Right. So it'll go back to here, right? Which will ask them, do you want to customize or change any of the product? Right. Is that the good place that they will go back to? Um, let me just uh, take a look at it here. Uh, customize any item. So ready to finalize um, and... Uh, so let's say, uh, here is a scenario that I'm thinking and you help me how your business is gonna handle that particular scenario, right? Sure. Uh, I, I kind of finalize a product where I wanna like it upload a logo, a brand slogan for my product or for my company right. onto the mug, mm -hmm. right? And the pricing came at a little higher than what I had budget. So I decided that, hey, I wanna just put only the logo, right? Right. So at that point, I'm not probably gonna go uh, and cancel the order. I'm gonna go back into the item and right. say, it's okay, change or edit the item. Right. Right. And that, that's going to force me to go back and recustomizing the item because I'm no longer now doing two. I'm using only one. And then right. I so follow the same process, right? Customize. And then uh, that updated okay. customization needs to be priced again and I'll get a new price. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yep. Right. So I'll continue to follow that till... I'm happy with the price, right? Okay. The moment I'm happy with the price, I'm ready to finalize. Right. 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 So at that point, I'm going to go ahead and make a payment. Right. Right. So it goes back to the same process that they had it earlier. That ah, I hate it when this happens, when it essentially. So at that point, I'm going to go ahead and make the final payment. Yep. Or make the payment, right? Yep. So this becomes a yes path or a happy path when I do that, right? Yep. Okay, what happens after the payment? Do I identify and, uh, the shipping address? and then submit the order? Um, so shipping address should be pulled automatically. <clears throat> now, if they are a brand new customer, that's where they need to go through the account setup process and so forth. But here, mm -hmm. th these are corporate customers. So what if I have multiple shipping addresses for my company based on a location, right? Right, right. I'm a big company. I have like it's three different offices. So when so I'm gonna ship we need it, to, so we need to give them ability to pick the shipment, uh, shipping address um, while they are making the payment. Oh, at the part of the payment. Right, right. Yep, yep. Okay. So we can just make it as part of that. Uh, and uh, since all the shipping information should be associated with, uh, with their own profile and so forth. So at this point, um, then, they will just select the where they want to ship the product. So I'm just going to capture a note. Yeah. So that when we talk about making a payment process, we can just go further do that. Right, right. Okay. So at that point, right, once they make the payment, right? Uh, they should receive some type of confirmation of the okay, order. Placement. So is the order placed at right. that point? Yep. Or do they have to, like it's, hey, once they make a payment, they come back, uh, just like what Amazon does, it allows you a card, and then you just like it's click the final thing, the place order, and that's when the whole thing happens. Uh, we can provide them a final placement, but I think uh, since uh, here, uh, they, they should receive the order uh, confirmation at this point after they make mm -hmm. the payment, submit the payment. Okay, so what we're going to do it is they're going to place the order. Right. And again, we can look at as we get closer to the implementation that payment place the order happens. Sorry. 
this way, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And, and uh, then... receive confirmation. Yep. Click ahead. So. So are they done at that point with the yes. ordering? Yep, that is correct. Okay. So as you look at that, is there any other variation or this is the normal path that your customers will take it. Yeah, th this is what we envision. Uh, this is how it should work with the system uh, from the process standpoint. Yeah. Okay. Now, what happens? Like, it's do they always will browse it and then log in afterwards, or there may be scenario where they could have been logged in and then continue browsing. Y yeah. So if they are already log in, logged in. Uh, let's say they made one order, they missed something, and now mm -hmm. they are browsing the product. We're not going to force them to log in again. Uh, okay. we, we shouldn't force them to log in. Um, okay. But but that that needs to be defined in the in the additional processes. How? Okay. Um, so potentially, like it's, I'm going to put it as there could be a step here where. So log in, right? So, so after logged in, uh, um, so they can okay. log in first and then browse the products, uh, which is perfectly fine. Okay, so one of the things that you can say it then, right? Uh, when they are check out, right? We can make another decision here. Right, already logged in. Checks yep. it if it's already logged in. Right. Right? Yep. And if the answer is yes, they will just go directly to this step. Right. And if the answer is no, they will log in. Right. Right. And then in this case scenario, when they're ready to check out, we'll There's no undo button. Oh, there's undo button. Right, I can just say, hey, I'm gonna cancel this and I'm gonna put it ready for checkout to be here, right? I'm gonna go ahead and this particular thing. There. there it is, so now it's easier to read through it. Yeah. Okay, so let's kind of quickly review it again as we go through it, right? And we'll go from the start, right? And then you let me know if this is a good path or do we need to make any changes, right? So as a corporate customer comes in, they're gonna browse the catalog which is gonna be fed through your product department. Uh, they're gonna select an item for customization and, and uh, add to the card. And they will, if they are ready for checkout, just by placing the first item, they will go perform uh, the checkout process. If they're not ready and they wanna still add more item, they will continue the whole browsing process. And, and that loop can get repeated till they're ready to check out. Once they are ready to check out, you're gonna perform the check to see if the customer is already logged in. If they are, you're good, you're gonna move forward uh, with that. If not, you're gonna force them to log in and they're gonna go ahead and log in into the system. And then once they log in, you're gonna present them an option to customize an item. If they don't want to do any customization, then you just proceed with the payment and then place the order and they get the confirmation and that's the end of it. Right. However, if they want to 
customize at least one or more item. You present them with the customization option. So customizing a product is, could potentially be its own process. As we drill it down, we'll figure it out how they're gonna customize it. But once they select the customization, they will keep going editing the cart. And then once the cart is ready with all the customized item, you're gonna go ahead and say, hey, I wanna price the order. And then that pricing and order, it's typically gonna be a separate process, gonna be managed by the pricing department. So I think we should change it to pricing order process. Um, oh yeah, it's a price and order, yeah. Right, okay, gotcha. so I've yep. gonna put a price and order, right? Yep. It's gonna be a process. And it could be manual or it could be automated based on business rules. If it is false certain categories where you can automate, they will get the prize. If not, pricing department will force the pricing on the order and then uh, send it back to the customer to review it. Customer will review the price and then make a determination. Are they ready to finalize the order? If they're happy with the price, they will finalize the order and make the payment. So it goes back to our original payment process and follow that path of reviewing the order and getting confirmation. Right. If they are not ready, that means uh, either they are not happy with the pricing or they thought it's cheaper, they wanna add some more customization, they will go back to the customizing an item process. They will follow through that, get an updated pricing and then make that determination, right? And once yep. the uh, item or order is identified, they will do the payment. As part of the payment, they will essentially identify a shipping address. And I'm assuming it, Based on the shipping address, the payment process will calculate the necessary taxes, shipping charges, et cetera, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So once they do it, they will place the order, they will receive the confirmation, and then that's end of the process. Okay. Yep. Is that how you're envisioning the flow to happen? Right, that's, a, that's the order management process. Um, so. Yep, you, you can put a title order management process, I guess. Uh, right, so I just create yeah. an order item flow. Oh, It's okay. the process, and then we can definitely change yeah. it uh, to that. Okay, yep. so I'm gonna go ahead and then save this document. So for the class, right now, I'm done with having a discussion with the customers to that, right? And we identify some additional process that will require a conversation, right? So you essentially thank the customer and then move onward, right? So Harshal, thank you for your time today in building it out and giving us an understanding how you envision the ordering process is gonna work for your corporate customers. As part of it, we also identify a few additional processes that we may have to drill at detail. For example, making the payment, pricing an order and customizing the uh, item. All those things is going to be defined. And then we'll, what I'll do it is we'll set it up some additional sessions with you. And then let us know if there are any specific subject matter experts we should invite to those sessions where right. we can start drilling it down into those processes further. Right. So thank you for your time. And we'll send it out this captured process so you have an opportunity to review it and give us any feedback if you uh, identify that there needs any changes to it. Okay. okay, thank you. So that's the whole process to capture the business process. So any questions from the class? Um, no questions as such, but I'm just wondering that if we have to do this into the PHN thing. Yes. yes. That's what you're going to do it. <laughs> so, so, right. so the process wise, right? You guys created a, a set stakeholder map. You created a, a context diagram. Now, context diagram, you identify the arrows, right? Those arrows are very important. What information yeah. that, fed, that feeds into the process is here. Okay. So, that's how the, those things are connected. The, every process, a nursing assess, a nurse does PHN assessment or inputs PHN uh, assessment thing. Um, or signs up patient, basically, uh, based on the mm -hmm. medical form and so forth, 
right? So those can be individual processes. You, you can create individual process for every line item in there. Okay. Okay. And then uh, does there come a point where uh, these individual processes have to be combined into one? Well, remember we talked about the notations and I'll go back here, right? Essentially talk about the process connectors, right? You utilize this process connector to identify what processes you will connect to it. So there will be a multiple process. Yes, you can combine everything into a single process document, but it becomes too complex to consume. Exactly, yeah. So what we recommend is kind of just define the additional processes and identify how they are linked in. So you can just give a one big, just a process connection view, but don't give the drill down and each process itself will be a similar document like this, what I've kind of showed it. Okay. okay. What, what I have seen as well is, uh, <clears throat> You can have a high level process, which uh, talks about nothing but uh, the arrows on the context diagram, how they are interconnected, what, what is the sequence, right? Uh, so you have nurse, uh, who, so who initiates the process in PHN? Uh, you can start with there, uh, from, from doctor to nurses to mm. uh, other, other places, right? As a, as a yeah. very high level, you don't put yeah. any details and then, uh, then blow out every step in that high level process to its own process. You, you can do that okay. as well. Okay, okay. All right. So did you see it what uh, the questioning and how I used it questioning, right? I went back to the uh, reference to the context diagram and as Herschel said it, right? You may have multiple processes, you may want to do it, but what you want to do it is essentially identify one process, get started with it and then build it high level view, right? Alternatively, you can also start with a high level view to identify, hey, let's just select what all processes and the way that you do it, and I'll kind of show it. Um, um, right, and, and then you can capture it um, into a simple text uh, like, Are you talking about ordering process, Dilip, or? No, I was just talking simple things like this, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you can start listing it out, right? What all processes are. Okay. Right. And, and then you can just say, so, okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do that. Right. So if you look at it, right, here's the process that I essentially kind of walk through it and say, as a customer, I want to order a mug with my company logo. Right. So that's a customization and order placing item. That's the flow that we will use. It. Now, you may also have how I'm going to go about updating a product price, right? So we identify a few things, which is, hey, I want to do a make a payment, right? So you can just list it out here. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. All right, you can just say, hey, now I need identify a, right? So that price and order, right? Do a payment. Right. And obviously you will have different other processes. So you can do it those, those kind of things like this. Okay. So you listed all the processes from the conversation that you had it during the context diagram. Okay. And then you go back and it says, okay, let's work through it. And you will probably need to identify an SME for each one of them who you will be able to work with it. Okay. Okay. So that's the process that you do it to create that. So your next step, as uh, one of you clearly pointed out, like I think Pooja, it was you who said, do we have to do this for PHN? <laughs> yes, you do. So here is what I would recommend for you guys to do it, All right? So spend about 30 minutes, Herschel, if you can send back them to their breakout rooms. Right. Prepare right. a list of questions you want to ask it. What process you want to tackle it first? And let's, I, I, keep, I, let's keep it simple, right, Herschel? Let's yeah. just do it. Do you, what process you would like it? I, I think that they need to finish the PHN 
context diagram because that, that's that's going to trigger certain things uh, okay. for the, from the process standpoint. Uh, okay. Certainly, I mean, they, they need to work through the processes as well, but um, okay. yeah. So do you want them to give some time to finish the context diagram? First? Yeah, I, I would think, yeah, the, let, let's let, let them revise it. Uh, basically okay. both arrows, what information comes in, what comes out uh, and okay. who does that activity, right? So nurse, right. doctors and so forth, yeah. Okay, so let's do that, right? So you guys, let's spend next 30 minutes in revising the context diagram. Will that be good enough time for you guys to do it? Yes. Okay. So let's give a time till noon. Harshal will break out in the room. Right. Come back at the noon, we'll do that. And then what we will do is we'll review that and we'll start talking about what are the different processes. Right. Okay. And then we'll identify the next step. Okay. So I'm going to stop sharing it. Uh, and Herschel, if you can just create a breakout room and then we will be back at noon. Is everybody good? Any question before I open the breakout room? Uh, can I please get a five minute break before we do that? Yeah, just take a break. And then I'm just saying is it's um, be back at noon. Okay, yeah. Okay. Right. So Herschel will kind of ship you in the breakout room. You can just pause it. You can step away for a break and then come back and continue working with the team. Okay. All right. All right. Herschel, we are ready to go into the rooms. All right. Sounds good. <clears throat> Okay, when you go in the site, since I already have an account, it is like it's kind of prompting it here, but you will have something called um, try it now in a green here. So you click on that. I'm gonna create it like it's kind of log in, right? So I'm already logged in and I'm gonna start the smart draw. So to try now and uh, then uh, you fill out and create account and that's where it will yeah, take all, you, right? All, all you need to do is a user, like it's email address and a password. So everybody created account. Are you in the page where you can see my screen? Yeah, I'm on the first page. All right, you can launch that when you go in, right? So if you click on the left-hand side from the list of flowcharts, you will get lists like this. And then you can click on that one with the landscape and it'll create a new one, right? And then you can just essentially first try to save it, right? So in this case, I'm gonna save this thing as uh, PHN, well, then we have a patient registration.
process. Okay. Then I'll just save it. So now this is a patient registration process. Okay. So everybody there? Yeah. So after flowchart, you again yes. went into the first one. Yeah. After flowchart, I so, went into the second one, which says that use the horizontal, right? So after you 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 create so, uh, the account, so you say what next? After you create the account, and if you click a launch smart draw, you should be at this page. What you're seeing on my screen. Okay. Does uh, everybody see the screen? Uh. Flow chart, flow plus. I see the screen, but um, I don't know how I can get to the screen. Once you I log in, have, you I should have see the same that. thing. Because I see Oliver is on a page. I don't know how I can get You went to... through this. Did you see this page? Yes, I see this page. Click on launch smart draw. You say see launch smart draw? Uh, if I click it, it's like on your page. So hang on, hang on. Did you click on this screen? And when you click on that screen, you should be at this screen. You should have my document. Maybe you are like something like this. You scroll it down under new documents, you're gonna have a whole bunch of options. And one of the option is flowcharts. So you click on the flowchart and then you get to the screen. No, do I have to minimize the whole no 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 the video call? No 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 Cynthia go go um uh, hold on after this screen you said would you click with um the flowchart or the swim lane, which one? Right, once you click on flowchart, uh -huh. there are multiple templates. Right. Take this swim lane landscape template, and at that point, it'll give you something like this. Yes. Okay, yes, so that's yes. what you needed. So, um, um, Oliver, since you are in the room with Cynthia, can you guide her if you are able to reach there? Yes, let me help her. Okay. What about you, Pooja? Are you good? Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, Paul. Okay, what about you, Vanessa? Are you able to? Yes, I'm able. I'm here. Okay. All right. So, in the interest of time, like it's Oliver while you're helping Vanessa, let's start the process, right? Mm -hmm. So, all of you are here. Think about it, Herschel, as your user, and you are having an interview with him with the goal of creating a patient registration process diagram. Okay. So follow up with whatever question you have it to Herschel, right? Mm -hmm. Potentially, like it's the first question would be is who will be doing a patient registration? So start with that question. Herschel, you can answer that and then. I'll let from that point onwards, everybody else in the class should be asking a question and I'm gonna be scribed. Okay, so <clears throat> the patient registration, right? Yeah. <clears throat> um, so the so the child that goes, uh, generally child has a, everybody has a physician, right? And uh, so this, this is a special medically handicapped uh, child and uh, while they are visiting their physician physician can can basically initiate the process of signing them up for the bcmh uh, program uh, so that there is a form that uh, they, they need to fill that out uh, that the patient uh, sorry the pay, uh, provider uh, will fill that out or doctor office will fill that out on behalf of patient and uh, they will also include uh, the who, which nurse so they should he, they should be contacting to get the process started. Uh, so there is a medical form uh, <laughs> they, they they fill out and uh, give it to the patient, and then 
basically patient uh, will set up a time with the PHN nurse uh, mm-hmm. or the patient family will set up a time with the PHN nurse uh, mm-hmm. to initiate the sign up process. Uh, patient or patient family, uh, because patient uh, is uh, may or may not be able to um, take that information, right? So generally the family, because they are, they are children. Yep. So generally the uh, family of the patient. So, Harshal, you said that take the form to nurse, BCMH division? Yeah, so, the- so they will initiate, they will call the nurse. Um, basically, the, the nurse's number will be on the form. And so they will set up a time with nurse, call the nurse to set up a time uh, for, for, for her to come in and uh, basically initiate the sign-up process. So you, you will have a PHN nurse involved uh, in the sign-up process, right? Mm-hmm. Moment so that I can capture. Okay. What? Okay. So, class, feel free asking Herschel question. What happens after patient contacts the nurse? So the guardian will provide all this information, the patient information. Is that correct? So patient information is listed on the form the doctor fills out. Mm-hmm. And, the, and the example of form is, uh, is shared with you on the, on the folder. And that, that it, it says patient medical application form. That is a document that uh, you can refer to what information is part of the form. But generally it will include patient details, uh, what treatment doctor is providing. Um, and uh, some insurance information, what type of insurance patient has and uh, who is a PHN nurse they are referring to, uh, that information. And what uh, services they are referring to as well. Okay, so services meaning uh, depending on the patient's condition, doctors can say, yep, for this service, these are the recommended services, but then BCMH will evaluate those things. The nurse will evaluate those and sign, sign, sign up the patient afterwards. <laughs> Okay. So what happened after sign up? Uh, so nurse nurse will take the form, right? So they will set up an appointment with the nurse. Uh, basically, so nurse will receive the form and uh, nurse will actually do, do set up a time for initial assessment. Okay. So that's the initial assessment process uh, gets triggered for the nurse. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then um, nurse will input that. So this nurse will conduct the initial assessment. And at this point, um, as part of the initial assessment, I mean, she will go and visit the patient and uh, go through the interview process and so forth. But that can be uh, its uh, own process as well. Okay. So, so that, that can be a separate process. If you're not asking question, can you put yourself on mute, please? Okay. So continue asking questions. So they visit the patient.
so we are continuing in the same thing after the visit of the uh, visit of the patient or is it a separate process that we want to consider uh, I, I would think that's a part of the assessment process uh, so so that that's a separate process those details you can capture in the different process okay so when you say visit patient is like uh, going to their house or something like that yep or yep uh, that, that that's exactly what it is yep so the daily activity information and other things will flow through that process and uh, then at that point so at, at, at this point though right so nurse we will get the information and uh, create the patient information into the system at the end of the process sign up process so so nurse will come back capture all the information and input into the system Uh, what about in case, okay, the patient doesn't have insurance or stuff like that? Um, so so that is fine. I mean, the, the patient, it's, a, it's not really insurance thing, right? Because it's the county who is paying for child's treatment. So they are not worried about whether patient has insurance or not. Mm -hmm. But But the minimum requirement is they need to be in Ohio in order to qualify for the program and meet certain financial criteria. So nurse will collect all the information along with the assessment. As I said, I mean, there are a few other things that goes along with the assessment. So I, I would keep it as a separate process, uh, determining the financial eligibility and other things. So I have one question to add here. Sure. Now let's see if we understand that. So uh, we understand that there's a patient, but then we find out that the patient is not eligible. So do we have to enter this anyway or? We'll end the process then. No, we will still capture that in the system. Hmm. Uh, we will still capture that, but we'll just mark it as not BCMS yeah. eligible. Okay. Not program eligible. Okay. Yep. Because the nurse can determine that, right? I mean, uh, once they look at all the paperwork uh, from the parent and uh, they, they can determine, hey, this child. Uh, a certain medical condition, which is not qualified under BCMH program. That's the first mm -hmm. of all, or they are not, they are financially well to do or some other criteria, they don't, they don't qualify as well. Okay. So, when you say log the information, right, Dilip, I, I would say create the patient uh, record, uh, oh. basically present uh, medical record into the system and capture the initial assessment. Those are the two things that but, goes along with that. So does that happen after the eligibility, right? So if they are not eligible, oh, they, the they are not eligible. Capture. Right, right. Okay, okay. Right, and they are just logging the information in the system. Oh, right, right. And that's I, it. I have a question here. So sure. uh, once we identify, or oh, once we already decide on visit patient, then eligibility would make sense? So we identify the eligibility first and then go into set up the time for assessment and visit? No, the eligibility can be financial as well as the condition of the child, right? Okay. So, so okay. they have to go and visit the child yes, and yeah. assess that. So they, it has to be both at the same time. Um, then they can determine the eligibility. Mm -hmm. So, okay. I mean, you can separate out the financial eligibility step, right? Okay, is the patient financially eligible? That's the first thing. Uh, so th that's the first thing you, you can put in. And second thing, they go and conduct the assessment. Is the patient, does the patient has an eligible condition? to qualify as under BCMS program. Like the uh, <laughs> disease, but-, but Yeah, what, certain okay. certain diseases or or what program they qualify under, you have to conduct okay. other okay. assessment, okay. yeah. So now when um, the nurse approve or if the patient is eligible, so the guardian receive like a notice or something or no? Yeah, so 
once the patient is approved, mm -hmm. uh, generally the BCMH program will issue a letter of uh, basically some type of letter that will mm -hmm. indicate it, it's called LOA. Um, that that letter will be issued letter of authority um, and it will include what services the uh, the patient is eligible for or so so the patient can take that to the doctor and provide that information okay so that doctor can start billing for the treatment to the to the bcmh program afterwards so it, it will let's say let's say they say okay patient is eligible for this treatment or or this particular treatment only it will be listed on the on the eligibility letter okay okay so end, end, end of the sign up process loa later will be issued to the patient letter of authority will be issued by the bcms program And that should be the end of the process for okay. what happens if they are not financially eligible uh they will not issue loa and at the point at that point they will notify that basically that they are not eligible then the process should end there patient uh, or family financial ineligibility would also have to be logged into the system right uh, can you repeat that so like uh, we so if the patient is not eligible for bcmh program we are uh, logging that information in the system so if the um, patient is not financially eligible sure then we notify the patient is fine but then we'll also have to log that into the system uh, the financial eligibility happened determination happens uh, before the actual assessment. Okay. Uh, so let me let me see, see it here oh, okay. how the process is here. Okay. Um, so if they are not eligible, we probably will not have the patient into the system. Uh, that that's what you are trying to say. Is that, is that correct? Yeah. Because so that, my... that would happen. Yeah. So we will be logging into the system or no? um no i i i don't think we'll be will be logging in the eligible patients yeah that's correct if they don't meet financial criteria that's the first step then we will not log them into the system because the, then there is no assessment if we don't have assessment so then we don't, uh, yeah, we don't right, even need we will not either. right right okay. right Now there is another thing, right? So there, there are two ways they can sign up. One is uh, comes from the doctor, right? Uh, there a second thing comes from the family itself. Uh, they, they can call the hotline 
um, and they can uh, sign up, basically set up an appointment with the nurse and uh, go through the same process. I would say call up the hotline to set up a call up a BCMH hotline, uh, and the, then they, they they can set up a time um, for the sign up. Um, what they will do is uh, they will assign a nurse, okay? Uh, the BCMH program will assign a nurse and uh, uh, they, they need to contact the nurse and uh, set up a time. So it will repeat the process with the contact uh, nurse and set up a time. Uh, okay, I see. Yeah. So I need to add a swim lane. Uh, I think you can connect to the parent guardian contact a nurse, right? And set up a time for sign up process. I think that that should be fine. So you feel the that same arrow. this thing yeah. instead of here, just make it go here? Yeah, connect to the, yep, yep. Same process because they, they will get a name of the nurse, assigned nurse, and they will reach out to the nurse and uh, set up a time. Okay. So it, it, are we good with this process, Herschel? Is there any other path based on what we have captured it that you need it? No, I think at this point, I think it uh, seems reasonable. Obviously, the, it's a secured access, right? So you can show the additional steps for the login process for the nurse and to conduct, uh, to capture the information uh, into the system. Okay, but that will be the further detail, right? From the business yeah, process point of view. Yep, yep. This is yep. what it is, okay. Right. All right. So did everybody see it, what we did? Yes. Yes, but uh, uh, I was just trying to, uh, so Cynthia, but how you started the whole thing, uh, I left behind, so I couldn't start it for my, my page. Uh, again, you, you didn't have to draw this thing with me. Okay. This is something for you to see it as, as we are capturing the information. I'm going to send this one to all of you. Okay. I'm going to so, upload it into the shared area so we can see it. It's right now. Yep, it's in the middle of processing. And you guys can create the same one for practice, right? First... Uh, create this same diagram if you want to practice and then second one be for the homework additional processes uh, um, that you can think about it but make sure you review all the documents okay medical information form what information is there uh, what goes in in the assessment form because i pasted the links earlier in the chat window so i, I want to make sure you capture that the, and look at those forms along with the family handbook go through okay. that as well so, Harshal, let me get clarity for everyone. So, what you would like it as a homework for them to read through the documents and create an initial process diagram for patient assessment process. Right. And the billing process. Yep. Okay. So, create those two, right? And just do an initial, right? I understand you're not asking Herschel any questions, but based on your understanding, create that. Identify it, it, all the additional questions that you may have it. 
so that we can ask Herschel on Thursday and then you can get the clarity on your uh, process diagram. Is that what we are asking? Uh, um, actually, you will get clarity for the billing process as well as assessment if you go through the family handbook. Okay. 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 So you should already have the information and I can provide the clarification on Thursday for your diagrams. Okay. So I'd like you guys to come with the diagram based on what out the process wise in those in the family handbook. Here is the document. So if you go to the BCMH information. Yeah, BCMH information. Yep. Okay, on the BCMH information, so we do the billing diagram and assessment. Yeah. And what? Patient assessment. Okay. Patient assessment. Okay. Yep. Okay. And if you guys see it, I just uploaded the two PDF files that we created for the process flow up on mm -hmm. there so that you can refer it to In it. In the drive, okay. In the shared drive, yes. Make sure you now you're going forward, you have to pick up the tool. So this is a popular tool, SmartDraw, but there is another tool called Visio from Microsoft. That's the most likely you will end up using in the real world. Mm -hmm. But SmartDraw is also popular with a lot of companies. Okay, so pick up uh, one of these tools for modeling. And uh, I'm gonna paste one more link here in the chat window. Okay, so there are plenty of windy videos for the smart draw. Uh, so you can go through them. Uh, they are short videos, like a two minutes type of videos, how to do certain diagrams and so forth. So that one will help you as well. So I just pasted a link in the chat window. Yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, sorry, Cynthia, I muted you. Looks like uh, your mic is uh, giving some echo. Hello? Yes, okay. Please, do you hear me? Yes, yes we do. Yes, so we, we can, yeah. Yeah. For the smart draw, the account that I created, I couldn't get the, the like the page that everybody got. Mine was like a, a graph mark, a graph page or something. Can you share your screen? Get yes, to the original share your screen page quickly. As everybody got. So, Cynthia, Cynthia, go ahead and share, share your, your screen. screen. Oh, I canceled it. Go back, go back to uh... I canceled it. Would you cancel? Oh, you, you close. Yeah. Uh, does Oliver? Uh, are you in there? Are you able to go? Maybe maybe you can work with Cynthia on that to make sure she has uh, she can log in. No, even though that Cynthia, we should be able to even log in. You created an account, right? Yes, I yeah. created okay. an account. So go, go ahead and share your screen. Open okay. a browser. And I'll walk you through. Doesn't that. take much time. Yeah. Yeah. So in the Zoom, share your screen. Let me share. Let me see. Where is the screen? I no, I can't even see it. While well, we are waiting for Cynthia to share the screen, any other questions from any other participant? No, no, not now. No, my, my share screen, and I can see. No, no. All right. So Harshal posted the question. 
uh, and the homework information into the chat. Mm -hmm. so go ahead and access that information. Mm -hmm. All the sample ones that we created today are out there on the uh, share folder. So you should be able to access it. Okay. And then Herschel, we are meeting at 6.30 on Thursday, mm -hmm. right? Yep, that is correct. So your primary homework is to read through the documents and create those two processes. Yep. And if you don't have any questions, uh, you can drop off. We're going to help Cynthia access the tool. Thank you so much. Have a good day, guys. All righty. Thank have you. Have a good day. Okay. Bye. Bye. So I wanted to share my screen to you for you to see, is that the right thing so that I can uh, maybe... No. Yeah, so go ahead and share all over your screen. You see my screen? Yeah, so yes. do, do a favor, but we can't see what <laughs> problem Cynthia has it, right? Because you're already at this screen, so you know actually how to get it. So um, this, is, this is the right thing, right? Yep, that's the right thing. Okay, so um, how did you pick the uh, the draw map? That is the you already thing. have it. It's already in the draw mode. Right. If you look into the left hand side, there are mm -hmm. different shapes. Yeah. Just drag so and whatever drop. shape drag and you drop. want to drop it, just drag it, select it, and drop it. That's it. Oh, okay. And then there is lines at the top, right? Right here. Yep, there it is. You use it connected from a box to another box. Select that. Select the line. And then just draw it. May you have to go from a one point to sure another you draw point. from the left to right. Yeah, one point to another. Yep. Okay. So you get some practice around it. Okay. I mean, it comes with the practice. So spend some time at home on this one and uh, you should be all right. Okay, so in, when, when you want to type something, uh, which one do you select? It? Just double click yeah, and just, type Just it. type in, double click and type, yep. Okay. Yeah, there you go. All right. Okay. And, and for mine, like the page, it says I have to pay. No, you went into the wrong options. Just go and try it now, just like what Oliver gone. Okay, uh, let, me, let me help you. With that. Okay. I will let him help me, but all right. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. All righty. Okay, we'll see you guys on Thursday then. Yep. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.